sorry about I, that. I, I, you on. don't want to hear it, Tariq. Nobody wants to hear it because they want to say, oh, she deserved oh, it, right? Really? Because okay, you, you the man. Say, but okay, if somebody's trying to come at you, you're going to put a bullet in them. That's what Ashley Babbitt you, you, was you, a okay, of people so, so you're, coming you're after her who was yelling You're literally stop. not wanting to hear the whole aspect of what happened when I know the facts of the oh, scenario. Yeah. And it. I can show you the video of her punching the man that broke the window and was upset with that man breaking the window in the first place. After she punched the man, she had to escape the situation, and the only escape was to go through that window oh, because there was no other exit outside of, of that, that point sir. after she had punched the man that broke the window. That officer was yelling, get back, get back. He didn't say a damn, he didn't say a goddamn thing. He didn't say a motherfucking goddamn thing, Teresa. And that's a fucking goddamn lie what you're saying right now. You're a goddamn liar if you continue with that shit. I'm at least I'm at least willing to look at the facts about George Floyd and admit that this guy killed him. You're you're saying you're you're backing up the guy and saying shit that isn't even fucking true about the situation. She was coming at that officer with a crowd of damn rioters, and he did what you said you would do: put a bullet. She in. led all them rioters to that fucking place, and she was she was running the show that he day. Was, and she deserved to be fucking murdered by a cop. See, that's the two he, that's, that's the two faced hypocritical that's fucking mentality that I keep on hearing through all of this. Sir, I, you're the one who just justified Kyle Rittenhouse, and you said if somebody's coming at you, you're gonna pull a put a bullet in them. But when it's a white woman coming after a black cop oh no it's something else so what are you talking about and an unarmed white woman you're gonna shoot an unarmed fucking white woman yeah. coming to attack you. yeah that she unarmed. didn't even know was there with who the was, gun and you claim that she yeah who was coming with a crowd of people with her storming the capitol and the cop is yelling get back According no, to man. your logic, according to your logic, you said you you put a bullet in their head. No, no, you're mixed match and shit, and it's no. uh, that's, that's pretty messed up, man. No. That's really that's that's really screwy that you want to mix match no. something from a whole different, and, completely and different also, state, different Kyle, scenario. Kyle, Kyle Rittenhouse, the guy who was running after Kyle Rittenhouse, had a skateboard. He Horrible had, correlation. Your debate sucks. You felt no, no. Kyle Rittenhouse shot an unarmed person and killed him, and you thought that was cool. Now your point is horrible. It, it makes no no sense no, whatsoever. Sir, I'm, three. I'm using your Zero. logic. None. Your logic has failed completely. It's 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 absolutely <laughs> your logic horrible. changes based on race, sir. No, no. Your logic ha ha takes no. something that now, has nothing to do with another you situation. No, and you, no, no, you were perfectly fine with Kyle Rittenhouse shooting an unarmed person. Yep, that mother effort deserved it. But when Ashley Babbitt was doing something she wasn't supposed to do, oh no, she was poor unarmed white woman. Oh God, she was there to bake cookies. What are you talking about? She was trying to escape. She was. They they dragged her. What 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 logic is this, dude? <laughs> she was trying to escape. <laughs> you correlate a riot, okay, that happened oh, wait, in Wisconsin wait, listen, to something that happened on no, a completely wait, different saying, day wait, listen, at the capital of the United States in a whole that different Ashley scenario. Babbitt was trying to escape. <laughs> you, you, your correlation is 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 ridiculous. I mean, I, you, you, should, you should look in the mirror at what you just said and and, and realize that so, what you said is absolutely so, asinine. So it has nothing Babbitt. to do with the other. Nothing. So Written House and Babbitt. Ashley Babbitt have nothing. No Who correlation whatsoever. Windows trying to storm the Capitol. You say Ashley didn't really break the window. I explained that to you, but you don't want to listen. She was trying to escape. She was trying to leave the building. That's what you're saying. She punched the man that broke the window because she was upset with him attacking and breaking the window. Oh, she and was doing upset with him for rioting, but she joined the rioters. She didn't join the rioting. She hit no police officer. The the video that shows her walking up to the cops that were at that door was was with uh, Taylor Hansen that I met personally. They offered the police officers water and talked to them in a oh, in a polite way. So they wanted to have a friendly meeting. So they were breaking in doors to offer water and cookies. Okay. <laughs> and, water and, and no, just water oh because they God. weren't there to oh, the, attack right, the police officers whatsoever. See, you don't yeah. want to look at the truth. I, I'm willing to look at the truth in the situation that you're bringing your up. Logic. You want to skew the I'm fucking going truth. By your life. You are the one who said, if somebody's coming at you, I'm putting a bullet in them. Absolutely. Oh, and and you're damn right. Greatest. You're damn right. Uh, I and, am an armed Texan. And, and, and if I'm attacked, physically, Bird, I will put a bullet in. And that's what Officer Bird did to Ashley Babbitt's ass. That's what he, uh, Officer Bullshit. Bird used your logic.
bullshit, Tariq. You're full of shit, man. Officer and it's a blast. Bird, I'll, I'll be your honest logic, with you. sir. You know, I, I never saw this right coming here. out of your. So you agree with Officer Bird? Officer Bird did what you would do and what Kyle Rittenhouse did. So Officer Bird is a hero too, right? Bullshit. Bullshit. Is that what you think? Why is call he not a hero? Bird if, hero right if Kyle now. is a hero, a hero no, call him, if call him Kyle a hero. Rittenhouse is a hero, why isn't Officer Bird one too? Call Bird a hero if you think he's a hero. He's call him a, a hero, hero right now. He said, you he think Bird's a hero? The, he protected the, the capital. Yes, he's a hero. Okay, well, let me explain something to you. You are for the murder of unarmed fucking women. Aren't you for that too, of unarmed people? You just justified Kyle Rittenhouse, sir. Come on. Just because she's a white woman, you're okay with the murder and of her. Just That's all that say, Kyle man. Rittenhouse say was a white supremacist throwing up white supremacist hand signs. Unarmed That's American why you women are, are able to do murder American women. If they're white, it's all good. Go for it. That's what you're saying. Cops I mean, are fucking. Where, where is all this energy for Breonna Taylor? She was unarmed and they murdered her. So where's all this energy for that? Not the same fucking deal. You, now why, you're mixing up and bullshit why not? again. Why not? You're why a not? horrible debater, man. You, how, you're, how, you're, so? Your logic and your points are fucking horrible. You've lost same? every debate with me so when, since we started, Tariq. It's how is terrible. That not the same. How is Breonna the only Taylor thing you have is the mute button to stop me from 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 How is stepping Breonna over the Taylor Not the same. Breonna Taylor was a horrible situation, and it's it's not the same scenario situation that Ashley Babbitt was in. Yeah, it was an unarmed woman getting killed by race soldiers, and, and I'm not okay with that. And the cop that shot Breonna Taylor isn't a hero. See, I'm not a son of a bitch like you. I'm willing to look at the truth and the facts and call a duck a duck. But you want to call this motherfucker that it murdered an innocent American woman, he wasn't okay, innocent. unarmed he was American woman. And you want to say he's a she fucking hero? A That's sick, dude. You're a she sick motherfucker if you think. No, she was committing a crime. Storming the Capitol is a crime, sir. That's not legal. And especially when an officer is giving a lawful order to get back. He was yelling, get back, get back. He, he made said, no such fucking order. Yes, he did. And, and, and his, his voice was hoarse because he was yelling, get back, and she wouldn't get back. Negative. Said, That's a lie. You're speaking That's lies. You're, you're backing up a, a black man that murdered a white American That's, woman no, no, because no. you're playing race politics officer, right now. An officer who produced justice. I'm not. This isn't about race to me, sir. You're making it about race. This was an officer who produced justice. See, you're the one who got the racial hypocrisy. It's okay for Kyle Rittenhouse to gun folks down, but <laughs> when the black officer is producing justice, somebody's trying to storm the Capitol, and Actually, they got, that weapons, didn't lay a hand they got on. weapons and bats and swords and knives and guns. What was he supposed to do? He did like you said you would do, put a bullet in their head. And that's what he did, sir. He did what you would do, right? Nope. You're a fucking goddamn liar. And you know what? You, what you're saying right now, if you really believe it, man, I got to say this to you. You need to look in the fucking mirror and you need to do some soul searching, man, because you're fucking wrong. And no, God knows you no, wrong. No, no. Okay? And that's your spirit's going to be telling that you're your fucking logic. wrong right now. That's you need to look logic. in the mirror. You need to do some that's spiritual That's your search. logic, sir. That's literally your logic. That's your logic. It's your logic, Tariq. It's not mine. That's you've, yours. You've you said you would do that. If, you, you said if somebody's coming at you, you're going to pull a bullet in them. And Kyle Rittenhouse was right. These are your words, sir. You just so continue to hit the mute that button, that man, to get out what you got to say, but you don't want to hear that, what I got to no, say. Because, that's no, okay. you said enough, you said enough, and I'm just using your logic. By your logic, if Kyle Rittenhouse is justified, so is Officer Bird. That your, your logic is flawed, and your and your no, debate is failed. Sir. You have completely no, failed, my friend. I don't no. know what what you think you've accomplished here, but all you've done is shown everybody on here that your logic is flawed. Your it's debate your logic, is failed. Your you logic. have sat, literally sat here and said, this "Okay," and 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 contradicted yourself in no, so many. No, I'm going by your. Logic, sir. You're trying to racialize the logic. You're not. You're going by your logic. No, no, because you're trying to have racial privilege. You want to have the racial privilege to kill and put people down, but the other side can't do it. That's called white supremacy. Sir, you're practicing white supremacy on this phone. You know that? That's white supremacy in a nutshell, sir. 
Officer Byrd had way more justification than Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle Rittenhouse did a premeditated murder. He planned on going. You can't out. even compare the two. It's it's fucking Kyle hypocritical to even say that the two are the same at all. There. Kyle Rittenhouse planned that. He was sitting up here making videos talking about, man, I wish I had a gun. And why didn't they find him guilty? Um, uh, because of white supremacy. Oh, that's oh, white that's supremacy white is the supremacy. answer to everything yeah. you fucking have, huh? White everything you have is, is some. Yeah, white supremacy, sir. That's called white supremacy. That's how white supremacy works, sir. It lets white supremacist suspects kill with impunity. <laughs> Kyle right. killed white people, but it somehow right. it was racist of what he did. He, ki he killed some white people, people because it was white people protecting black people because Kyle was trying to get black folks, but black people saw what he was trying to do and it didn't work. So he got the next best thing. If you can't get a Negro, get a Negro lover. See, that's why you guys are cool with what he did. But if keep he, on defending child molesters, Tariq, hey, it looks good on you, man. Keep on defending were. the pedophiles, Tariq, because that's who he killed. Kyle didn't know that. You don't go you're around defending, killing, you're Kyle defending that. child molesters, Kyle you're defending a pedophile, Kyle you're defending somebody that, that likes to play with kids. Think Kyle about that. Look that. in the mirror, son. Kyle didn't know that. <laughs> It doesn't matter. You it know it. And you're matter. defending them. And you're, that and you're saying that you're with them. And you're saying, say, oh, well, it's justified because we checked their record. No, that's not how the law works, see? Boy, you're thinking like a white supremacist. You kill them first and then justify it later. No, that's called white supremacy. That's why uh, Officer Byrd, he produced justice. Protecting yourself is white supremacy now. Right. I got it. And protecting yourself like Officer Byrd did and protecting the Capitol is justice. So why are you so butthurt that justice was produced? Because Ashley was going after Byrd. He was, she was going to attack him uh, physically, right? Uh-huh. Uh yeah, if you're sitting up there breaking full of shit. You think she was going to... You're sitting there, yeah. He, she wasn't there to bake cookies, all right? She wasn't there to make some damn Rice Krispie treats, all right? Let's stop playing. And all of this this stuff you're talking about, she was... Prove to me Ashley Babbitt went there to dude, attack. Dude, stop it. She wasn't there to have a Girl Scout meeting, all right? Let's be very clear. Let's not sit She here wasn't there for like, what you're saying. She wasn't uh, there for what you're saying, she Tariq. Wasn't following orders. And, and, and to say that to somebody that's, that's been actually murdered by a cop and then try to claim that you're against police brutality... Sir, she got the Kyle Rittenhouse treatment that you justified. You said if somebody's man. coming at you, you, you said somebody's coming at you, they deserve to get it, and she got it based on your logic. So you it's a critical logic, my friend. You All live in right. hypocrisy. That's your life. That's what you stand for. All right. Thank you so much. I'm not going to hear white supremacist babble. You see. Family... You got to watch those kind of guys. First of all, this guy, white supremacy 101, the whole denial of whiteness. First of all, I'm not really white, dude. I'm a mutt, man. I'm a man. Eh, he's a white dude. That's why I asked him about George Floyd and then the reparations. First, first he came in talking about he supports reparations. Then you let him keep talking. He don't support reparations. It's the whole, the sky is falling. Oh, the the United States is going to hell. There ain't going to be no money, dude. Oh, it's not feasible. Okay. See, you got to watch them. They try to come in and act like they're your, your, your allies. You got to watch them. That's why I said, let me, let me, let me let this guy tell the truth. Do you think George Floyd died of fentanyl? I, it was a combination, dude. Yeah, that's what I thought. You're one of them. See, White supremacists, they're not unique at all, family. That's why I knew what to ask. Do you think Kyle acted in self-defense? Yeah. Yeah, you're goddamn right, buddy. Anyone comes after me, they're going to get a bullet, dude. Well, so Kyle, Ashley Babbitt, too. No, that's different. <laughs> she was trying to leave, dude. She got lost. She was going on a tour of the White House and got lost, dude. Boy, the damn white supremacist logic and lies. This fool tried to say Ashley Babbitt was trying to escape, and that was the only way out. <laughs> Good freaking grief. 
No, dude, she was looking for the exit, dude. And that Negro shot her, dude. She was there to meet Kamala Harris, dude. Oh, God, you white supremacists are the worst with the lies. I grew up with black people, dude. Okay, John Jackman, oh, we got a lot of them in here now. Oh, they're coming in here now. John Jackman, what's up, brother? What's up, Mr. Jackman? What's up, Tariq? Thank you so much for uh, for having me on, man. I was, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm honored. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for hey, listening. Uh, so how'd you feel about the conversation we just had with your your, your brethren who just called? <laughs> uh, yeah, I only caught the tail end of it. So uh, I heard it when it just deteriorated. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, but, you know, I heard hypocrisy from, uh, from, from his side too, you know, uh, as you mentioned, not seeing, uh, you know, the, uh, the Kyle Rittenhouse, uh, situation through, through the same lens, you know, you, I think you, you accurately described, uh, Ashley Babbitt getting the Kyle Rittenhouse treatment. Yeah. Uh, but, but I was more interested. If you're going to justify Kyle, you got to justify Ashley. If you're going to justify right. Kyle, you, you, you got to justify what happened to Ashley. Shit. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Officer Bird is more justified because that he didn't plan on shooting anybody that damn day. That man didn't know that was going to happen. You understand? He was doing his job. Kyle Rittenhouse, that was a punk who did a preemptive murder, man. That that's That's not justice, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, I I completely agree. Um, but I I was interested to uh, come up here because I, I heard your conversation with with Haas the other day, um, yeah. and I'm I'm also uh, you know I'm a member of the infrared community and uh, uh, the burgeoning American communist uh, movement uh, that we're we're trying to build, and uh, wanted to to get. Uh, I don't know if you have any more thoughts uh, on that conversation or reflections on that conversation. I'd be interested to hear. Um, but what you kind of think about uh, the position that that Haas articulated in his discussion with you and kind of where we see uh, the issue of uh, foundational black Americans, you know, as as core central, you know, uh, the one of the main engines of revolutionary struggle in the history of this country. Uh, but how we can kind of move forward on a basis of. Uh, promoting a, a a class struggle and recognizing that the the enemies that we have as as working people uh, are the same, uh, and how we can utilize some of that revolutionary energy that I know that we have in this country because our our politicians are so unpopular, our institutions are right, so but unpopular. Here, but, 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 but hold on, but here's the thing: yeah, yeah. Let's see, um, race trumps class in our society. So don't no matter what class you're in, race will trump that. And the race is white supremacy. White supremacy trumps all classisms because wealthy black people can get taken down by the poorest white people. Um, And this was something that the white supremacists used to write about. You're supposed to give preferential treatment to the poorest white man over the wealthiest black man. That's why Bill Cosby got taken down by a bunch of broke white women. That's why a Tiger Woods can get taken down by broke white women. You understand? Um, And it can't be done the same. You don't have poor black women taking down wealthy white men. Or hell, a poor black woman or wealthy black woman can't take down a poor white man at all. In fact, there's a case now, this black woman who's on The Bachelorette, um, she has her a white zaddy and they're getting divorced. She has to pay him child support. You, You always see black women who date these white men or marry these white men, they end up having to pay them child support and spousal support. Holly Berry, Aisha Tyler, a lot of these black women, they get ran through the ringer having to pay off a a damn white man. It's never the other way around. You don't see white men having to pay black women a damn thing or a, a white woman having to pay a black man anything. You understand? So class gets trumped by race all the time in a system of global white supremacy. That's why the communism thing, and I was talking to your guy Haas and breaking that down with communism and Marxism and all of that. We got to look at Karl Marx um, talking about Marxism and all of this stuff, but Karl Marx was an anti-black racist. You have anti-black racism in communist countries all over the place. Cuba, there's anti-black racism all through Cuba. The black people are still marginalized in a communist society. So we're still running into white supremacy 
no matter how you try to cut the cookie. So we got to deal with white supremacy. Anything that's not dealing with white supremacy is basically just running in circles, right? So, yeah, I, I got you. I, 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 I think the examples you use are, are, are good, and, and I definitely right. understand them. Uh, and, and I agree uh, with white supremacy being, you know, uh, central to how this country was, was developed and uh, how it's been promoted as a global system. I think that the argument, though, that I'm making is that the, the system, uh, the very system of, of white supremacy emanates from a system of class exploitation that at one point was, you know, historically advantageous for the European colonial powers. And that, you know, has, has been propelled and, you know, it goes through modern times. I know that you have more examples that even date back past the history of colonialism uh, for uh, the argument that, you know, race trumps class. But but the argument that I would I would say to counter that is that you know, for example, uh, uh, there have been various constitutions uh, that I would cite. Uh, one being the Constitution, uh, the Stalin Constitution of the Soviet Union, and then another example could be the Chinese Communist Party, which kind of lays out explicitly uh, an anti-racist credo, or uh, at least a anti-racist conviction in that constitution. Well, and I think a, that those were important. Well, to, let's slow it down because yeah. Because not to cut you off, but hell, our constitution, um, um, everybody's supposed to get equal treatment under the law and all of that. That constitution on paper is anti-racist, but in practice, our constitutional rights get violated all the time. Again, the George Floyd situation and others where black people are, are murdered without due process all the time. Black people are victims of stop and frisk. That's a violation of the constitution. Uh, we don't get equal protection um, black people get harmed and harassed. We don't have a hate crime bill. People can do all types of stuff to black people, and we don't get the, the same protection under the law that other people get. So on paper, it looks good, but in practice, it's a different thing. Again, um, race trumps class. For example, the Black Wall Street, um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, is a bunch of wealthy black people living prosperously in a wealthy class, but poor whites and rich whites and the white government all got together to destroy the black wall street. So race trumps class all the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I, I understand the, the point that you're making, but, but I, I think that I, I, I still see race kind of encompassing a, a tool basically of, of class exploitation that can take precedence. It can be, now I'm not, I'm not trying to minimize it in any way. I'm trying to say it can be, at the at the height, you know, of the social order, it can be one of the most preeminent pieces of the social order. And just to kind of go back to the point about the, the Constitution, if I may, just very quickly, yeah. Yeah. you know, one of the 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 differences between the American Constitution and the constitutions of the Soviet Union or uh, the Chinese uh, Communist Party was this explicit mention of racism as something that must be struggled against. And so I, while, while on one hand, you know, I, I, I hear what you're saying, I also think that uh, race has proved to be an invaluable tool at breaking up other forms of power which could emerge to challenge this global system of financial capital, which has obviously roots in European colonialism and is now today expressed in America, in America uh, financial capital. And, and I, I get your point about Black Wall Street, too, and, and know that there were cases where, and there, there have been numerous cases where, you know, rich black people aren't afforded the same um, rights or the same kind of uh, uh, benefit of the doubt or, or a recognition, even as poor whites. But I think my point is that even that is a form of protecting a system, a, a class system, if you will, based on protecting the way that the financial institutions, the financial oligarchy has been set up to operate from time immemorial. And so uh, I, I, I don't know if I'm, trying, I'm kind, of, kind of trying to thread the needle there, but recognizing that race is one of the primary instruments of class exploitation, but still kind of seeing it through, through that lens. Then you would have to point to a place where black people who are in a financial, financially independent position, where are they not attacked 
by the white supremacists. You would have to show any example of that where black people have been prosperous and they have not been attacked or sabotaged by the white supremacists. Where can you show? Yeah. So, I mean, that's a, that's a great point. And when you, when you ask that question, my mind immediately goes to, you know, people like, and I know this isn't a perfect example, so I, I'm not meaning to suggest that it is, but my mind goes to people like Paul Robeson, right, who once described uh, the Soviet Union kind of in the 1950s, I believed, as, uh, as a black mecca. Um, and he had a very different experience than his experience in the United States of America, um, at least at that time where he felt, you know, he wrote about this extensively, where he felt that he was seen as a human being for, you know, the first time really ever in, in his life. And so I do think that we should we give a little... No, 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 but let's see what it is, because not too many black people were in Russia. So he was an anomaly. He was an international star. He was blacklisted here, and Russia was beefing with the United States. They had the Cold War and all that stuff going on. So a lot of these countries know how to use propaganda to stick it to the United States from that perspective. So they knew getting Paul Robeson and treating him with dignity would be a black eye to the United States. So they were being tactful with how they were doing. So we got to understand how certain groups will use black celebrities and prop them up and say, hey, look at this guy. This is our guy. He's such a wonderful guy. And they'll use that as a form of propaganda to show the hypocrisy of the United States. A lot of Asian countries will do that as well. Um, a lot of, you know, and, and, and a lot of Middle Eastern countries will do that as well, too. For example, when um, Iran, they had those hostages in 1979, um, Iran let the black hostages go and just kept the white ones. And they did that to say, hey, look, the United States, you guys talk about democracy and fairness. We treat black people better than you do. So that was to stick it to the United States from a propaganda perspective. So we got to really put everything in the right context, but go ahead. Yeah. So, but I was, I was just going to ask if, if you, if you do see uh, any, or if you have a, the recognition that there is any fundamental difference in these two kind of, uh, well, I don't want to say two competing systems because now there are, we're kind of living in an era of emerging multipolarity where there's different civilizational interests at play in the geopolitical uh, world. But if, if you think that there's any uh, fundamental difference between, say, the systems that have been promoted uh, by the Chinese Communist Party and how they might, might differ, at least in how they handle uh, the question of, of race compared to the legacy of the, of the West, because that's really where I see the the main thrust of this kind of uh, racial supremacy emanating from is the is the domination of, of Western uh, financial uh, capitalists and, and oligarchs in particular. The thing is, China, they still got a lot of racism, anti-Black racism going on over there. Some of the images that come out of some of their animations and some of their um, commercials and things like that. We've seen a lot of anti-Black racism coming out of China uh, and different parts of Asia. But yeah, just because China um, is a communist country, that doesn't mean they still don't promote anti-Black racism because we've seen several examples of that and from other communist nations. So um, again, we, we got to show a working example of some society that's not practicing anti-black racism and all of them do. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, I think that one of my points kind of in favor of China again, because I do think that it's a important example to consider as it's kind of the alternative system that's emerging from the, the system of uh, Western expropriation and exploitation of the global South is, you know, maybe their, their relations with, with African nations being an example uh, where, you don't have the same level of high interest rates um, in terms of the loans and the development uh, that the Chinese are assisting with with African nations, and also the orientation, for example, of these nations in the Sahel, looking more toward uh, countries like Russia or uh, China, who were not involved in the imperialist division of Africa um, as as better partners uh, for supporting their genuine sovereignty and their gen oh lord no sir sir over when when the chinese are over there in africa they're exploiting africa they're not sharing the wealth you know they'll build some roads and 
a couple of statues here, there, they'll build a museum, but then they'll take all of the mineral wealth, the resources, the diamonds, the gold. Um, and in some places they're trying to take over the, um, the um, trade routes, they're taking over the airports in certain areas. So it's a very exploitive relationship. And there's places over in Africa that the Chinese are setting up that the black people are not even allowed to go to. They have restaurant and restaurants and bars and hotels that the Chinese, they're building over there and the local natives can't even go there. So it's very exploitive over there. And we got to remember when they had COVID, when COVID was popping off over in China, a lot of people forget how cruelly they were treating the African people over there in China. They were very discriminatory towards the African people. Um, they were forcing quarantines on the, the African people. They were doing a lot of real weird stuff over there. And again, you go over to um, some of the Chinese over in Africa, you see them beating on people and a lot of weird stuff going on over there. So yeah, that's not a great example of some type of utopia society under com under a communist system. Again, these people practice the same anti-black racism. So again, anti-black racism is something that we have to tackle and look at. But anyway, but let me get some more. Thank, thank you so much, yeah, John. Th I thank you, thank you, Tariq. I really appreciate it. All right. I don't know. Okay. Because I don't want to hear, because <laughs> then it gets into a little babbling type of thing. Yeah, these people from these communist nations, they still practice anti-black racism. That's what it is. So you can't show me an example of one of these places where they're not practicing anti-black racism. Just show it. Hey, Corey, let's get Corey in here. Hey, how's it going? Um, I I wanted to just jump back to the Jan Six stuff, if that's okay. Unless we're yeah, yeah, forward. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been in spaces before with the general. Um, he, he lies like crazy. Um, I see. I, I, yeah, yeah, you know, and I posted some of the receipts and, and down, you know, in the in the bubble there. Um, I, I wasn't going to throw them up in the nest unless that's cool. Um, but you know, one of them was eyewitness testimony of a guy who was there right next to her when she was shot, saying that police were verbally warning her. And that she didn't heed the call when she, you know, went through the window. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to say, she entered the building through a broken window, um, you know, with alarms blaring at that entrance. Um, and then, you know, a funny thing, I, I know the general, I've heard of him, uh, heard him talking on spaces for a long time. His buddy was Lucas Denny, who violently assaulted police that day and was sentenced to, what was it, 52 months in prison after he pled guilty. And I, I, I just wish I would have been able to ask him while he was there, like, does, does he think that Lucas Denny should have gotten the Rittenhouse treatment? Mm, mm, you know, mm. cause like I asked him one time, you know, what he thought of the violent assaults against police by his buddy, Lucas Denny. And he claimed that they were Photoshopped. The pictures weren't oh, real. Uh, <laughs> Lord. Right. So he's, he's definitely a special case. I see. Uh, yeah. So his lies are not unique. So yeah, he's a known liar. I can imagine. Oh, he, wait, he's here. Hold on. Wait, he's here. Let me get him. Hold on. Let's let's get him up. He's back. General, are you saying that your boy was Photoshopped, General? He's all up for the extermination of anybody that doesn't think like him. And Corey, you can go fuck yourself, man. I'll meet you face to face any day of the week. Uh, you're, you're a little punk ass, little faggot fucking bitch. General, and general. anytime you ever want to meet face to face and have a have a talk. Let's do that, okay? I'm up for that, you yeah, little sure, fucking I mean, punk bitch. You, you fucking right? punk yeah. ass, little fucking bitch. I'm down to general, talk all the general, time, man, but you, you blocked me, you know? <laughs> I didn't block you. I don't have you blocked. I'll meet you face to face, you fucking little fucking prick. General, watch your what language. What are you talking about? Meet up with me, dude. Let's have a face to face debate. You want to fucking, you want to talk shit, okay? Do it to my fucking face if you want to. You're it's not going to because you're a shit. pussy. It's you're it's a fucking shit. little left general hunter sack of fucking shit, and you got no fucking balls. You're a fucking punk. General, watch your language. General, you're, you're not at a honky tonk. Uh, let's watch your language, General. We got young people here. Can you have some decorum? Can you calm down? All right, General, just speak oh. without the... All right? I know you're passionate, but let's let's watch the language, General. All right? Can we do that? General, might general have been, might have been the double mute. Okay, all right, general. 
All right, we're, we're not going to threaten people, General. I'm, I, I, I'm not threatening. I'm saying that I'll meet any punk little bitch that wants to talk face to face. I'm more than willing to meet with you, Corey, face to face. I know that you're not willing to do that because you're a little sackless fucking cunt. Okay, and that's oh. just the way it is. Okay, that's oh, the way that, you're going to live the rest of your life, and that's who you're going to fucking be. And that's right, true. I just want to point out. I just screenshotted you. You have me blocked. I don't know why you're lying again. Oh goodness! Yeah, his, the, his language. His I had to get him off the oh, language. Yeah. So it, he, I mean, he does that every time. That's why he blocked me in the first place. I came at him with receipts, and he doesn't like that. Yeah, yeah, because he, he, when you when you bring receipts, he just starts cursing left and right. He just g crashes out. So yeah, he he hates the truth. I see. But anyway, but thank you, Corey, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, thank absolutely, you. man. Thanks for having me up. Yes, indeed. Corey's bringing the receipts on that ass and. General was crashed out. Now let's get all lives matter in here. All lives matter. All races are equal. Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah. Hi. So I was wondering, um, we heard insurrection so many times uh, over the media. And uh, can you tell me if any single citizen was charged with insurrection um were they i don't know i know a lot of people went to jail i know that none of them were charged with insurrection mm -hmm. but a lot I'm of them they were charged with multiple things right no hold on hold on let's talk about insurrection well let's talk about them storming the capitol and going to jail well we heard by media that it was insurrection, right? There's was, a lot of things that the media said. It, oh, hold on. Was it once or was it a thousand times that all kinds of media said it was insurrection? Was it yes or no? You tell me. What was it? Yeah. The media told us it was insurrection. Over, so what was it? If it, over, weren't, if it wasn't an insurrection, over, what was them storming the cap? What was that about? Hold on. Media told us it was insurrection over and over and over. I, I dare every single one of you to Google the names of individuals who were charged with insurrection. Try to find one, at least one. I was unable to find a single human being that was charged with insurrection. So that was an insurrection. So it wasn't an insurrection. It was not insurrection because nobody was charged with insurrection. So what would it be called? That's not the point. That is the, the point. Po no, that's not the point. The media is calling it insurrection. But so nobody, what is it? So is what is charged. it called? So, so how people... is it? How is it insurrection if nobody is charged with insurrection? I don't know. That's exactly my point. The media is lying to us. It's not so, insurrection. So what is it if a bunch of people storm the Capitol? What is that? Okay. So. A bunch of them were charged with obstruction. Is that accurate? Some of them were. A bunch of them were charged with... with majority of them were charged with trespassing. Trespassing. About a dozen of them were charged with uh, assault. Mm -hmm. So a, a dozen of them charged with assault... As, uh, the hundreds of them were charged with obstruction. None of them were charged with insurrection. Not okay. a single one of them. So the media is lying to us about January 6th. And I know how it works because I was brainwashed myself. I grew up in Soviet Union in a communist country. I think I heard you the other day talking about communism, that, mm -hmm. uh, that America's destination is communism. 
You want to try how communism works? Try living in China. Try living in Cuba, in Venezuela, in North Korea, in Vietnam. Vietnam is probably the mildest form of communism. But try living there. And tell me also how many people are moving from the United States, from this oppressive motherfucker, horrible country with systemic racism, how many of, of, of African Americans or anybody else moving from the United States, from this horrible country, to China, to Cuba, to Venezuela, and how many of those people from, from Cuba and Venezuela and China are coming to this country, to this motherfucker country, this horrible country, capitalist, rotting, systemically racist, horrible country? Well, I can tell you, I came to this country for a reason. It is the best country that I know. You're preaching to the choir. I escaped. I escaped you're, so you're preaching to the choir. Okay, well, you're saying this to me as if I don't know that. Oh, oh, I thought that a destination of the United States was communism. Oh no, okay, no, no, no. I'm I'm not pro communism. What are you pro? I'm pro black empowerment. I'm not pro communism. So I'm all okay, I'm all black, about removing, let's talk I'm about, all about I'm Let's all about, about replacing the system. Oh, oh, slow down. Let's I'm all about. Re hold on, dude. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. I'm all about replacing the system of white supremacy because white supremacy is global. Okay. Okay. So, so I, let's I'm not, talk about I'm, white I'm, supremacy. I'm, I'm, yeah, let's talk about it. Go ahead. Okay. So I've lived in this country for 25 years. Right. I have not met a single white supremacy person. That's a lie. I don't believe you. Oh. <laughs> I have. That's not true. That's I not true. Not. It's, now, it's maybe impossible. there are some in prison. That's impossible. It's impossible for you to have not met a white supremacist. That's I have not. impossible. I have That's not. not true. That's I not have true. Not. Ask yourself, every single one of you who is listening, ask yourself. What you, what you said is not how true. How many people have you met that are wearing a shirt, white power? Or that's not a, no 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 let's slow down slow forehead. down slow down you're talking about a white extremist we're not talking about them you're talking about somebody walking around with a sheet or a skin I, we're not talking about them those are white extremists white supremacists that's your everyday librarian a white supremacist is your everyday judge a lawyer who believes in white supremacy they don't wear the sheets and the hats they're not going to wear a name tag that says hey i'm a white supremacist no, your white supremacist is the everyday casual um, white supremacist. They're not going to no. have some kind of identifier on them. So, so yeah, you cannot crazy. see you cannot see them. Mm -hmm. You cannot hear them. Mm -hmm. You cannot uh, feel them with your hands. Mm -hmm. But they exist because they. That's they exist. that's your argument. That that's their argument. They, that's, white that's supremacy is their term. No, 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 no. White supremacy is their term. They told us they were white supremacists. They told us this is a white supremacist land. They drilled this into our heads. They put this in books and in laws. They put up whites only this, whites only that, white schools here, white church there, based on white supremacy. They told us this. If you are referring to America 60 years ago in uh -huh. south in south that's it's not the south? that's no longer let's no longer America in 2025 or why why not how come it's not what what makes you think a lot of people and you're not yet arrested you're not yet killed that's for starters. But just because uh, they had, didn't kill me doesn't mean that there's not white supremacy. So. We had we had uh, the, the, a black president for two terms. We have black senators. We have black congresspeople. And? We have black governors. We have and? black mayors. 
We have and, black police officers. We have and, black chiefs of uh, chiefs of police. We have black generals. And okay, and they are powerless in their tokens. You had a black president who was a powerless token who couldn't help black people worth a damn. What's your point, sir? What did Obama so do Obama, to help black people? Obama was not uh, able to help black people. That's interesting. No. What did he do for black That's, people? If he did not do anything for black people, it's not because he was uh, in, uh, the, the powerless. It's because it was, he, yeah, he, it was. He couldn't do anything for black people. It's because he is a socialist. And socialism is not a solution. And I can tell you why. That's just babbling, sir. You're just babbling at this point. Oh, yeah. Obama didn't do a damn thing for black people. So bringing him up is a moot point. Talking about a black senator, what are they doing for black people? They can't do anything under the system of white supremacy, right? That's why they allow them to be in certain political positions. So, so you believe in uh, the existence of white supremacists that uh -huh. you not see. They don't tell you that they are white supremacists. They are hiding behind oh. the, the, the job of a librarian. They are hiding before, uh, behind the job of a, I don't know, of a doctor, of a, mm -hmm. of a nurse, of Uber driver. Yeah. But they are just white supremacists because you decided to label them as such. Um, no, they said that they were white supremacists. They when, created when a system the of white. Time, when they, the they, they created a system of white supremacy. You're trying to say that they stopped 60 years ago. When did they stop? How did they stop? And why did they stop? We have multiple people in power that are blacks, Asians, brown people. What black person is in power? Name one black person who's in power. Right now, we have uh, the defense minister, the, the secretary of defense is black. And uh, what's his name? Uh, come on, the, uh, the secretary of defense. That's how powerless he is. We don't even know him. What's his name? Oh, my God. Okay, I will look it up. That's how powerless he is. Don't, you don't even remember his name. Am I supposed a, to remember lawyer, every name? Am I supposed to remember every name? Well, if you brought him up and he's supposed to be so powerful, he's not really that powerful. Just one tokenized black person. Are you talking about Lloyd Austin? Lloyd Austin, yes. Right. He's not powerful. He's just a tokenized black person who has a good job. That's not power. That's not power, sir. So the, the president of the United States, two-time president of the United States. Powerless as hell. Powerless. Powerless. Couldn't do a damn the thing. Defense for black secretary is powerless. Can't do a damn thing and for black somehow, people. And somehow, somehow, white supremacists is con are controlling this country. Yes. How does it make sense to any one of you with common sense? Because they can get him out of here at the drop of a dime if he does anything they don't like, sir. Well, how He's come, powerless. The how white come, he has to answer to the white supremacists. How That's why. Come He's he powerless. Was, how come he was a president for eight years? Why? Because why? he was because he's not going to upset the status quo. That's why. Because he's an asshole, maybe. Because That's why Obama, Obama, they allowed Obama to be in the White House. Obama strengthened white supremacy. That's why. Obama protected the white supremacists. Obama, they didn't punish any white people for killing black folks. They killed black people under Obama more than the entire Jim Crow era. Obama and Eric Holder didn't punish one so person. So yesterday, uh, the, the mayor of Chicago, uh, uh, the, the, the black uh, uh, mayor of Chicago, uh -huh. is, that, is that powerful enough for you? No, he's a token too. Okay, so he's a token too. Yeah, so he's a in, Chicago, token. In, in Chicago, all of the uh, leaders, political leaders, are blacks. 
and, and all they of get them, them are, all of them they're are powerless. Let me, I'm gonna they give you, a, let me powerless. give you an example. Let me give you an example of how powerless they are. Let me give you a great example. Okay. You know, Kim Fox out there and, all, and she's one of those leaders that you talked about. Kim Fox, remember her? I don't remember, but uh, okay. that's fine. go ahead. All right. She was a prosecutor out there. And when the Jesse Smollett hoax popped off, she didn't prosecute. She kind of just let it go. They went and found a special prosecutor to put charges on Jesse Smollett. They were like, oh, no, you don't, Negress. Oh, no, you don't. We're going to get a special prosecution to open this case up and get them charges on Jesse Smollett. That's what I'm saying. When black folks don't do what they're supposed to do, the special prosecutors pop out of nowhere. Then they bring the real white folks out who's really running the show. That's what I'm saying, sir. They got powerless tokens that they put in these positions to just let the status quo be maintained. You understand? Uh, Tariq, you're uh, taking some details uh -huh. about something that I'm not aware of. Uh huh. And you're using it to prove your point. And my point has and been. And you're proven. missing. You're missing the fact that multiple hundreds, thousands of political leaders, including mayor of Chicago and uh, a prosecutor and all that, are blacks. But Sir, your claim is you're are claim powerless. There are a lot of black mayors around the country, and they put them in positions to basically protect the white police, protect the status quo, like Eric Adams out there in New York. He does his job, which is to let in a bunch of immigrants and not do anything to help the black community itself. None of these people actually do anything to help the black community, but they seem to roll out the red carpet for immigrants like yourself. That's why you think this country is so great. It's those black mayors and senators, they're helping you, sir. As an immigrant, they help you come over and get all types of benefits and resources, sir. You understand? They don't help us at all. They don't do anything for us. So you're, you're against immigration? Yes. Uh, we should close the borders. We should not let no more people over here like that. We should close these borders, sir. Uh, God bless you. I agree mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Except, except uh, legal immigration is different from illegal immigration. Let's just shut all of it down for a minute. We got enough people. Let's just shut it down and let's get this money okay. circulated. I would be okay with it. I don't have a problem with it. Right, right. So who are you planning to vote for in this election? Um, probably the couch, because nobody's saying anything I want to hear. And we're sending too much money over to the Ukraine and all of these places, and I'm, I'm not cool with it. And by the way, you're from over there in Russia. Um, there's a lot of neo-Nazi groups over there in Russia, by the way. So when people start talking about communism and all of that, they still muster up the strength to be racist. And what's interesting about Russia, the Russian language was created by a black man, Pushkin. You know that? Yes, Pushkin was a, a quarter black man, uh, either quarter or uh, one eighth. I well, can't remember, he's, but he's uh, but, he's uh, uh, let's. Uh, I can't remember which specific African country he was from, but uh, he was a, a African from Africa. Yes, he was black man. Yeah. He was very proud. He was very proud now, of his black, he black was, man. But... He was also a three quarter white, and I don't know why uh, we are calling uh, anybody who has even ten percent of uh, black uh, black. Uh, but that's that's irrelevant. I I am not Russian. So I you're actually, not Russian. Yeah, I, I am actually, I actually hate Russia. Now, what are you? I'm Georgian. Oh, okay, you're close to Russia. You're over there, okay. And that don't they have a lot of gypsies over there in Georgia? Uh, no, we don't. Y'all don't have those gypsies? Because there's a lot of poor-ass people over there in Georgia. No, not in Georgia. We don't have too many gypsies in Georgia, no. Okay, but y'all got some poor-ass people over there, some poor white people over there. Poor, poor white people. Uh, yeah. Well, depends on uh, how you define white. Okay. In Russia, <laughs> in Russia, when I was in Russia, I spent some time in Russia. Uh, my father served in Soviet army. Um, 
he was called Black Hess. He was uh, called multiple who? times over, and uh, uh, so was I. Y'all were called what? Black S. Black ass? Yes. Okay. Well, now, why were they calling you black ass? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. So, because our skin is tanned. Okay. We look more like Mid-Eastern versus, uh, versus uh, uh, Slavic looks, which is uh, kind of uh, Northern European looks, more like. Mm -hmm. Although you can you can meet uh, people that are a uh, mix of Asians and uh, uh, whites, plenty of them. But one yeah, would got, in Georgia and Russia, no, those are white people. They they're classified. If they come over here, they're going to be classified as white. You know. You, uh, I would say that majority blacks that I met, uh, they would uh, uh, they classified me as white. However. I did not classify myself as white. Yeah, people always say that. Yeah, it's the government that called me white. I'm, I'm an alien. Yeah, y'all yeah, play that. I'm not really white game. That's. No, I that's... don't. I don't have a problem being called white. Yeah, because you. That, that, that's guy. not my point. That's not my point. My point is that Russians did not call me white. Uh, I identify myself uh, like uh, uh, South. Southeastern European. Yeah, that's white. Over here, that's white, sir. Okay, that's, that's, and that's fine. Geogra that's white. That's geogra white. Yeah, yeah, that, that shit is white. Geographically white. speaking, geographically yeah. speaking, Georgia is a, a border of Asia, and technically, it's part of Asia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for most Americans, uh, that's incomprehensible because. Uh, they they don't understand. They they think Asia is. But, but we do understand when they get here, they're white. That's all we know. When they get here, all of that, all of the little ethnic nuances, they are white when they get here. And just like you, you've been you you're putting the cape on for them January six rioters, just like other white people. So you fall right in line with the suspected white supremacists. That's what we look at. That's all that matters. All of the little ethnic nuances back in Georgia, back in the slums of Georgia and Russia and all of that stuff. Yeah, they might have called you something else over there, but when you get here, you fall in line with the whites and the white supremacists, and that's the issue, right? And why? what makes me a white supremacist? Suspected. I suspect that you could be because... Again, you have um, seem like you have somewhat of, com of a camaraderie with some of those um, January 6 guys, and many of them were suspected white supremacists. Many of them were part of white supremacist organizations over here, like the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys. These are white supremacist groups, straight up and down. Many of the people in January 6, they were running around doing the white supremacist hand signals all over the place. So, yeah, they were white supremacists. So anybody who puts so, the cape on those guys. Hand, hand so signals, hand signals. Yeah. Um, the uh, what? What else? Uh, so the, they are hiding their identities. Uh, they are not really. Not really. They not really. And somehow they are controlling this country and preventing yeah. you, you from succeeding. Yeah, they control the country, and I can still succeed to a certain level in spite of the white supremacists, only to a certain level. But that's because foundational black Americans, we have the spirit of Majara and we're very great and phenomenal. We can do that. Other people can't really do that under that kind of pressure. That's what makes us so phenomenal. Under strict oppression, we can still find levels of success. But you over in the slums of Georgia, you couldn't pop it. You couldn't get it popping, so you had to flee and come over here to the people with that Majora spirit in order for you to come up. And then you have the same kind of mindset of the white supremacists. And that's the problem, sir. You know why I came to this country? Um, because we built the place that you can come and thrive. That's why. I know why you came. And Georgia wasn't popping. It's poverty over there. You broke white people. You don't want to be a broke white man. You come over here and make your whiteness work for you. That's why you came over. Right? To make my whiteness work for me. Yes. Because your whiteness was not working in the slums of Georgia. You were sitting over there 
eating some potatoes and baklava with flies on you. And you said, hey, man, I got to get over there to America and get with this white thing. Let my whiteness work. I heard that if I go over there, my whiteness can work for me. So why are Africans coming to this country for the same reason? Why are they? Yeah, they're coming over here because we got things popping. Because the white supremacists destroyed so, their land, so, so they got to come here. So blacks are coming to this country from Africa because they want to use their whiteness? to succeed. No, they come over here so that they can get some of the benefits that foundational black Americans like myself fought for. Because we had to fight these white supremacists in order to get something. And other people want to come over here and get some of those gains, too. Did you defeat the white supremacists in this country? We did not. No, no, no. We did not. Unfortunately, we still no, have. If you did not defeat them, if you did no. not defeat them, and if they are still oppressing, why are the black Africans coming to this country? Because we are not living like they're living over there. Over there, they've destroyed those nations. The white supremacists have completely destroyed and colonized those nations and squandered all of the resources. Fortunately, we don't let them do that. We will fight them and stop them from doing that. We're we're going to get what we're supposed to get over here on our homeland. This is so, our home. So the entire leadership of uh, African countries are 100 uh, percent Africans. But somehow, somehow, it is it is white supremacist fault that those African nations uh, are underdeveloped. One hundred percent. And Georgia what? is also what? underdeveloped because why? Why is that? So Georgia is slums of Georgia yeah. that are qualified as whites, mm -hmm. and I'm being white, right? So yes. How come is uh, uh, Georgia is fucked up as a country? Yeah. Uh, even though it's white. Yes. Why are white supremacists not not helping Georgia? It's a white country. Because you guys are lazy over there. Oh, so we are lazy. Okay, so you're I'm, lazy. You're, you're lazy. I'm lazy. You're and lazy. Why I came because to... you didn't make your whiteness work over there. You had to bring it over here. The African nations. They are sabotaged. You have you're not, sabot very, you're not sabotaged in you Georgia. Have you have just, a very simple explanation of, of why Georgia is fucked up. Yes, you're why lazy. Not, why Nigeria it, is fuck, fucked up. Right. And you're lazy why, in Georgia. Why South Africa is fucked up. Uh, it, so Africa is messed up because of the white supremacists. Okay, Africa is messed up because white supremacists. Yeah, because they colonized it and they still control the economics yeah. and the trade. And, and Georgia, that's controlled. Listen, slow down. That's controlled now by the white supremacists. So it's their fault. If you're running things, everything bad is your fault. And in Europe, you're running things. Right. It's your fault. That means right. the lazy white supremacists didn't step it up. And and Georgia uh, being white uh, is yeah. a fact up because uh, uh, Georgians are lazy. Yeah. Well, yeah. Some of you, the the lower class ones, you you just you didn't work hard enough. Some of us, or most of us. Well, the ones, if you have to flee, that means you just didn't really work hard in your own homeland because you had white working for you. So now that we heard your explanation of why yes. OJ is fucked up, can I offer my explanation? Go ahead. Let's hear it. Okay. Georgia is fucked up because of Georgian values. What's the Georgian values? Georgian values are a victim mindset, mm. victim of Russia. So they, they believe that they're victims of Russia? Yes. Okay. And there is uh, a lot of truth to it. Okay, that, that, that is some truth to it, yeah, because the white supremacists, and, and you know, there's a lot of infighting over there in Europe. So yeah, I believe that. A lot of infighting. There's always been a lot of infighting going on over there. But okay. go ahead. Infighting? Okay, so... Uh, yeah, you, you, uh, yeah, um, you're trying to make it fit your your narrative, and that, that's fine. Uh, I came to this country because this I believe this country is a, a great country, a better country to live for most people uh, in the world because of American values. 
not because uh, it was built on on the uh, on the backs of a particular group that was a minority historically but because it's it's a, a the country of great values better values than most countries in the world uh, what what are american values american values are uh, individual freedom uh, Christian values. Christian values? Okay. Oh, Christ- let's, let's slow down. Wait, let's slow down. Individual freedom. Okay. Individual freedom, Christian values. Let's slow down. Hold on. Let's slow down. We got to, let's break all of these American values down. So you're saying American values, individual freedom, and it's a country that got all of its wealth from slavery. Hmm? How did it get all of the uh, wealth from slavery if uh, there were uh, how many percent of slaves uh, in this country? It was a lot, sir. Uh, how, how much percentage was? Um, the percentage, there were millions of enslaved people in America, sir. There was a lot of slaves. And how many, uh, uh, there were how many millions of uh, not slaves, but uh, slave owners, so to speak? Um, there were a lot of slave owners, but the United States government kept us enslaved. We couldn't get out of slavery because of the entire government, meaning black people who escaped and tried to go to get freedom. Oftentimes, the United States military would go and try to get them. They let's had make, federal. Hold let's on. make an assumption. So, since you cannot provide me the numbers, let's make an assumption. Hold on. No, no, no. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Because you're asking me a moot question about percentage. I'm just telling you, the entire government was involved in slavery. We couldn't get out of slavery because of the entire government. Okay. Let's okay. That is true. I don't, right. I don't argue with it. Okay. So uh, percentage-wise of population, if there were, um, let's say, 200 years ago when... when uh, America was uh, 200 plus 220 years ago. Yeah. Um, when Amer- America um, declared independence. Um, let's let's Google this information. Can somebody Google this information? Um, I would the, the, like to know. Is the, you, how, what would you like? How many uh, white uh, people lived in in the United States uh, at the time of declaration of independence? and how many uh, of them were blacks, and how many of them were enslaved. That's irrelevant. We were, slavery why is it, was- Why the, is it irrelevant? That's irrelevant because it was, you're talking about the exact number, the exact percentage. You had- I, 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 We don't need exact. All, we don't need exact. We don't okay. need, we, we cannot- There were mil- what you Okay, there's, there were millions of black people enslaved and that free labor built up all. Let me, let me explain why is it relevant. You said it was irrelevant, right? So let me. Yeah, you're trying what... to find out the exact percentages. That that's just no. kind of filibuster. No. You, exact, you exact filibuster. Percentage is not known. Exact percentage is not known. It's impossible to know. Okay. We don't know today how many exactly we have. Exactly. But what we do know, we do know, all of the wealth was built off that slave labor, the free okay. labor. And uncompensated labor, all of the wealth that's, in this. That's a, that's an interesting claim. So let me uh, explain my point. Okay, no, no, no. Let's make it practical because now you're kind of filibustering. No, this it, is not a filibuster. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. Hold on, slow down because I I don't want to talk in circles because you're about to start going on a tangent, uh, basically a deflection. Name an industry that generated wealth during slavery that didn't involve slavery. Go ahead. You are taking it to a different topic. Okay, no, 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 let's make it simple. No, 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 let's make it simple. You're not giving me an opportunity to explain. No, 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 we're gonna make it real plain, all right? Because you're trying to filibuster. I want you to name an industry in this country that generated wealth that was not involved with slavery. Name it. Uh, 
I would have to uh, think about it and uh, research it. I don't have a, an answer off the top of my head. I got an answer. None. All of them. All of them. Okay. Were involved in slavery, sir. That's what I'm saying. All of the industry. So can I, can I say something now? Okay, go ahead. Okay. So we, you said millions of people were enslaved, right? Yes. Blacks. Let's assume a uh, hundred million. Would that be okay? No, no, not a hundred million, but millions. It was some millions. Okay, so how many millions would be a reasonable what, okay, number? Okay, what's your point? Go get to your point because I don't even know what so the point say, is. So let's say let's say ten million. Would that be a fair number? Okay, let's say ten million. Now what? So in order for uh, for uh, to claim that wealth in this country was because of the slaves that were 10 million, the population of the United States should be 11 million total, including 10 million of slaves, because 90% of the work was done by slaves, and therefore 90% of wealth was, uh, was because of slavery. The reality is that maybe there were, I don't know, 20% slaves? And you cannot live wealthily if there is 20 people, uh, the, 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 20 white people and one slave. Uh, the, you cannot be wealthy when that is the ratio. So <sighs> if we had... If or what kind of horrible example is that? That don't make, that didn't make no sense, brother. That's why I'm saying... Well, here, here's why that it, made, how it makes that sense. Didn't make, here's that how make, it makes sense. Yeah. That's that's babbling. When you claim that, that's just babbling. That, sir. that, that made that zero well, sense. Stop, 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 stop. That made zero sense. You just this is what I'm saying. You just filibustering. You don't really have an answer. You're just kind of babbling and saying stuff. That made zero sense. Not only did it not make sense, it was nonsense how you that how you frame that. You don't really have an answer. That's what I'm saying. So I don't want to waste time. You're just saying something just to say it. You don't really have an answer. That was horse crap, what you just said. All right, so now you've you've kind of thrown in the towel. When you start saying stuff like that, that means you don't have anything, and that's just, you're just saying stuff. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, since you're just doing that, we can just... Okay, so... Get, so all right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, when, uh, nah, when you just say weird, goofy stuff that don't even make sense... All right, now it's time to end. Now you, you're going to bore people because now you're not even talking in good faith. That You don't really have an answer, all right? I, I'm going to make it real plain. Just show me an industry that made wealth in this country that didn't involve slavery. Uh, I have to research, but if you have 10 million and you have two white people, then three white people will have three cookies. Uh, uh, he like the like the count from Sesame Street. You remember the count? Just say random numbers and it don't mean... <laughs> You get three white people, and then you get two slaves, and you get three cookies. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. You just, okay, you just said random shit that didn't make no sense. If you have, let's say 10 million. 10 million, is that a fair number? Okay. You get 10 million, and they are 20%, and they're doing all the labor, and you get four white people. That doesn't add up to... 300 percent okay you're just saying shit man you're just saying stuff yeah let's get our um, made coins in the building made coins in the building hop on made coins yes hello everyone hello the host that was a very good um speech you gave out um i think i don't like to judge um, people, but sometimes we all judge. But that individual right there, he has serious issues. He's prejudiced against black people. I just yep. checked his profile, and he has a serious problem. All right, he doesn't know nothing about black history. He doesn't know nothing about history at all. But he comes on here, and then when I checked out his profile, it's like, you know, it, it, it just tells me who he is. He's supremacist. Oh, yeah. He's a white supremacist. Like, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? But for everyone that's on here, don't waste your time and energy around people like that. All right? Don't waste your time or energy because they don't right. do nothing. And going by what everything, what you said, 
That's all straight facts. Yes, um, sir. I just I don't want to hold your time up as a host, but I want to make this. I want to share this with everyone. Um, I'm from the USA. I'm from Connecticut, next to New York. I grew up around racist racism. I mean, we we all experienced that in some part of our life, you know, especially being um, a black person. Um, I have many different friends of back different backgrounds. I get along with everyone that gets along with me. Um, there's a lot of um, foreigners, like say, for example, from Guatemala, different countries from South America. Um, this female I was talking to, she um, she t- she said to me, um, I'm a nice guy. And then this is what she told me. She told me that like uh, a lot of the um, white men around my area, which didn't surprise me, they talk negativity saying to her, her people from Guatemala and other countries that black people are bad, this and that. It's a stereotype that continues to go on, which is untrue. And then she yeah. told me that like she didn't believe that uh, uh, white guy saying that because a lot of uh, the white guys, whatever background, uh, mostly Italians were um, um, saying that um, black people is this and that. It was just false information, you know. Okay. And that's the. Uh, but th- thank you so much, brother. Thank you, brother. Okay, okay. Thank you, brother. Brother, this is kind of going on and on. Thank you so much, brother. Let me get my sister Brooke in the building. All right, sister Brooke in the building. How are you, beloved? Well, yeah, Miss Brooke. I see Wani down there. What's up, Sister Wani? Hello, hello. Hey, Brooke, how are you, dear? I'm good. How are you? I'm trying to take Bluetooth and everything. Um, Yes, yes. Um, I just wanted to uh, say hello to everyone. Good night, everyone. Um, I just wanted to bring up uh, the the march that happened downtown Nashville when the uh, what was he Georgian gentleman was sitting there talking about I'll do white supremacists wear t-shirts. Well, they were marching um, in downtown Nashville on July 6th and they all had masks on their faces. So we couldn't tell who they were. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. So yeah, they try to hide in plain sight. And, and, and when he said, I, I've never met a white supremacist, shit. I knew that was cap. Because let me tell you something. You want to know what a white supremacist is? Somebody who deny it. The minute you see somebody denying white supremacy, that's your white supremacist right there. That's your white supremacist right there. Somebody's a white supremacist in a system of white supremacy. And everybody want to play dumb and try to hide in plain sight. No, we see you. No, we see you because you're practicing it. Yeah. And then we get to talking to people and we see what their ideologies are, even though they try to act friendly. You let them talk long enough, then the anti-black racism starts coming out. Uh Uh-oh, I got one. Uh Uh-oh. You know, that's why you got to know how to ask certain questions. Like the guy earlier when he was talking about reparations, I said, oh, no, no, no. Let me let let me ask him certain questions. And when we start asking him certain questions, you saw how he crashed out. He started off all cool. You know, hey guys, you know, I'm all for reparations, did. I'm all, you know, I want to see black people get it, did. And then later on in the conversation, you goddamn son of a bitch. <laughs> you guys are the effing worst, man. Ashley Babbitt didn't deserve that, did. You know, he, he crashed out later on in the conversation. He crashed all the way out. Yeah. Man, shout out to everybody in here. We are like 1,200 people in here in the middle of the night. Family, listen, family, the movie Microphone Check, if you're in L.A., if you are in Los Angeles, family, the movie Microphone Check is going to be back in theaters this Friday in Los Angeles. So go to microphonecheck.com, get your tickets to go see Microphone Check in theaters this Friday is at the Landmark Sunset Theater. It's going to play all week. Go see it this weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Go to microphonecheck.com. And then next week, the 19th, is going to be in other cities, and I'm going to announce that. But the L.A. run is going to start again this Friday. 
you got to go see Microphone Check. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal film, ladies and gentlemen. This is the film you don't want to miss. You got to see it in theaters. You got to vibe with it. Real good vibe. Go to microphonecheck.com, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let me let y'all get some sleep because I got more interviews to do in the morning. But you can go to my YouTube channel, check out the interview I did talking about Microphone Check. On KCAL News, I tell my story. Uh, cruising through in the black on black with my family, bending corners, triple tinted with hella B. Before them, I didn't think this could ever be. Rowing the pillar smart, but moving aimlessly. I remember when I used to get.